Welcome to Publishing Power. My name is Joellen, and we are very excited to have Joanna Penn with us today from The Creative Pen. Thank you for joining us, Joanna. I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me on the show, Joellen. It's great to be here. This is fantastic. For all of our new writers and those who've been around for a long time, and I know this is very exciting, um, just to let you know a what, bit about Joanna. She is an award-nominated New York Times and USA Today best-selling author of thrillers, under the JF pen name, and also writes nonfiction for authors with over 30 plus books published in 84 countries and five languages. Her award nominated podcast, The Creative Pen Podcast, has been downloaded over 3.7 million times in 219 countries, and at over a decade in production, is one of the longest running and most popular podcasts for writers. Joanna is also an international professional speaker and award winning creative entrepreneur, which is why we're here today. In 2013, she was named one of The Guardian's top 100 most influential people in publishing and writing. And in 2018, she was awarded the Publishing Commentator of the Year at Digital Book World. TheCreativePen.com is regularly voted one of the top 100 sites for writers by Writer's Digest. And I agree, I love your podcast, your newsletters, your courses are out there, I have your eBooks loaded down. So I am a big <laughs> fan and I appreciate you coming on here today to speak with all of our listeners. Oh, thank you so much. And you know, for all those people out there, it all starts with the, the first book. And you know, when I got started back in 2006, I started writing my first book and I, ne I could never imagine what my career would be uh, many years later. And I'm sure we'll, we'll be talking about that, but I just want to encourage anyone listening who's just starting out or just in those beginning phases. Uh, it's just about writing that book and taking it one day at a time. And then like a decade or so later, things have happened. <laughs> It, might, it feels like it takes a while, but once it starts going, it, it gets better. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I, I honestly think I've been watching you almost most of this time. So this is really cool to see how much it grows. And I see the new books coming out. And I'm like, yeah, that's really good too. Yeah. So really great. I'm so glad you came here today. I, I think what I'd like to talk about today is authorpreneurship because you are an excellent uh, thriller writer and we have all of that. But for the writers out there who are starting a new I, I want them to understand that, you know, it's not just the craft. It's also making sure because today's world, especially the digital world, is very busy and noisy and there's so many ways to get out there. So could you explain to us a little bit about entrepreneurship from your point of view and your perspective? Sure. Well, at heart, I think it is about a mindset because there are a lot of authors in the world who just want to write their book. Um, you know, a memoir, I think, is a really interesting category because a lot of people, you know, they write one memoir. That might be the only book, fantastic book they write, but they don't necessarily want to run a business as a writer. And even in traditional publishing today, if you want a traditional publishing deal, they're going to ask you, what's your author platform? How many people do you have on your email list? do you go on a podcast you know do you have a podcast do you have a newsletter so the business side of being an author is often not talked about like I feel like so many there's so many courses on writing a novel for example but there are very few courses and even books on the business side um, of making a living as a writer and look the truth is that most people like 99.5 percent of authors don't make all their money with book sales. Uh, you know, people have multiple streams of income. And the number one, like for me, between 2006 and 2011, I had a day job. Uh, I used to implement accounts payable into large corporates. I mean, really, that was super not creative, but it paid the bills. And let's face it, you know, uh, you've got kids you mentioned, and we have the mortgage, you, you have the bills, you need, to, you need to pay this stuff. So don't, I, and when you're a new author, you think, oh, I just write my book, because someone will pay me millions of dollars, and I'll just retire. That is not the reality <laughs> of being an author. So even if you do get a book deal, which might be a few thousand dollars advance is, is actually average, it might be more, but then you still have to do um, all the work associated with that. So the mindset shift is saying, yes, I want to write, but I also want to run a business. And because I come from the consulting world, so I, as I said, you know, I was a, a implementing accounts payable, I was paid really well. And when I looked at the authors, the author space, 
I wanted to be an author, but I did not want to be paid what most of most authors got paid. And I was like, how, how are people accepting this? This is not very good. Um, so I decided that I would take the entrepreneurship into being an author. Hence, authorpreneur has become, you know, a term that people use or author entrepreneur, two words. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, you have the craft side. You, we're always trying to be better writers, and I, I, you know, I'm about to get back to my 18th novel, and you know, I, I write, you know, novels, and I write nonfiction, but I also do other things. So, as you say, I sell courses on writing. I have nonfiction books. I do speaking. I have a podcast, the Creative Pen Podcast, which has paid sponsors. So I have advertising. I have Patreon. I have all these different streams of income because the the bare truth is you you pretty much cannot make a living from one book. And that's what many people starting out think they can, but um, things are a bit different. But I wanna be encouraging about it because if you love learning, and many authors love learning, then learning the business side can be just as fun and rewarding and creative as well. Like look at what you and I are doing right now. We're yeah. creating something that will exist in the world as an audio podcast. It, yeah. this, this doesn't exist as a book. This doesn't exist. It might exist as a transcript at some point, but it, you know, people are listening. This is a totally new thing we're creating between us with the energy between us and people are listening and, and wow, that's cool. You know, we can do this. This is marketing. That means it will bring people in. So it is technically a business activity, but it's also a great way to connect um, with other creatives. So I want people to think that the business side is also super creative. Right. And, I, and that's very true. I was talking to uh, Sasha Black the other day and she was talking about the different steps. And one thing she pointed out to me was beyond the multiple streams of income was for her to start, she wanted to be debt free because that could take away all the stress and really allow her to be creative to do those things. So in today's gig economy and where, where we are, it's a lot of things to think about and it does overlap now. So that's great. Yeah. And in fact, I mean, that's, um, Sasha's a friend of mine as well. And, um, I also downsized. So when I, cause I'm, I was the primary breadwinner of our family. And so in order for me to change my career from highly paid consultant to author, um, we sold our house, we sold our investment properties, we sold the car, we downsized to an apartment. Because I said to my husband, you know, I got to the point where I just hated my job. I was crying at work every day and they paid me, you know, high six figure salary, but I was so miserable. I just, I just didn't want to do it. I was like, I can't do this anymore. And my husband said, well, you know, what, what can we do? And I was like, well, you know, I'm going to try and make this writing business work. So we saved up some money, we downsized and I said, give me six months. And if I can't start making that, I won't make the same money, <laughs> but I'll start making some money. So 2011, I quit my job. 2015 was when my income went back. To where it was so it took me four years and then yeah 2015 was when my husband left his job to join the business so that's the good news that you can go you can make and i make more money now than i ever did as a consultant because of um creating intellectual property assets which is what our books are from a sort of financial side um the assets that bring in income every month so that's the sort of journey but as with sasha i also took the step to downsize and that comes back to what we said at the beginning which is it's a mindset and it's also about what do you want mm -hmm. most you know most people don't necessarily want to write 30 plus books or do all this stuff so you have to decide I think um, what you want uh, for example if you want to win a literary prize mm -hmm. then don't independently publish if you want to win a literary prize you need a traditional publisher pretty much at this point it's still mm -hmm very much owned by traditional publishing. So if that's what you consider success, then go that route. For me, it was always that I wanted to be independent creator and to make a living with my writing. So it's about decision. It's about taking control of your creative and your business journey. And yeah, being empowered as an author. I think that's my mission is to empower people to take charge and not just wait for someone to pick you. <laughs> Uh, that's a very good point that, you know, many people do stand there saying, look at me, look at me, read, 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 read my book. It's the best. But it's not about that. It's about finding your people and finding, you know, your connection and then creating that. I, the last I was at the uh, book expo in New York and they were saying, you know, you needed 10,000 people in your platform before you could really get an interview with some of these people. They weren't interested. And you're like, 
wow, okay, you know, and that's an eye opener for some people. It's, I just wrote my book. You told me now I have to go find people to like me. Well, yeah, you do. <laughs> Yeah, and it used to be that the publishing industry did the marketing for the authors, but that has definitely changed. So that's why you have to decide what you want. And that's why I think um, independent publishing, being an independent author, is full of, you know, it's a very broad church. There are people like me who, you know, I have 30 plus books, I do all these things, I make good money. And there are other people who write their book and are just happy with a day job. And that's great as well. And their book is fantastic. So I want people listening to really feel like you have the choice. Mm -hmm. You can do it however you like. And also you can learn over time. You don't have to like start day one and do everything. You, you learn as things change. Right. And I think that it is a journey. It, we always talk about where are you in your publishing journey? Where are you as an author in your journey? Because it, it's kind of like yoga. You're just practicing every day. You're just writing every day. You're just going on to the next step. So it, it is important to realize that. Well, but it's interesting that about yoga. So yoga is a really good, I do yoga as well. And um, I think the difference is that I practice yoga and I go to the yoga studio. I love it. I've been doing it for a number of years, but I do not want to be a yoga teacher. I do not want to run a business as a yoga teacher. So, but some people do. Mm -hmm. So what you have to think, writing is a practice like yoga, but becoming an authorpreneur is a, like becoming a yoga teacher. Oh. And sometimes the joy is taken from the practice by making it commercial. And I want to acknowledge that completely. And in fact, Elizabeth Gilbert in her wonderful book, Big Magic, talks about this. She says, do not make your art pay. And I'm like, yeah, fine for you to say, Miss Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> but I love, I love Liz Gilbert. She's fantastic. I follow her on Instagram. She's, you know, wonderful. But the fact is, I'm, you know, I'm someone who enjoys business. So for me, I'm happy to run a business as a writer. But in yoga, I am not happy to run a business with yoga but it's a great analogy do you see because it's a practice it's nurturing it's something that people love and writing is the same so this is the biggest question for you to answer listeners as an as a writer do you want your writing to be like a yoga practice or do you want to make money with your practice which means you have to learn the business because there is no other way to make money right as a writer <laughs> It does. Yeah. Help. And that's, that's so brilliant there. So I, I know you offer a lot of great tips and books and such on the creative pen for writers. And we're talking about your process and we can see that we're all going, wow, wow, she's so successful and she knows it all. This is great. Tell us about what we should avoid. Tell us about maybe some insight on things you wish you hadn't done, or maybe, you know, you could say, wow, you don't really need to go down that because, you know, learning, preventing us from making that same mistake could be very helpful, I think. Yeah, well, one of the big mistakes I made very early on, because I started self-publishing before the Kindle. So, you know, it's before eBooks went mainstream. And the thing then, and st I still see, see people making this mistake, is thinking that print books need to, you need to pay someone to print books for them to go in your garage, and then you need to sell them. That's not how we do things anymore. We do print on demand, and this will change people's lives, right? Because basically print on demand is you upload some digital files to, I use KDP Print and Ingram Spark. So I use both of these services together. And um, then you just upload the files and then anyone can buy your book. So if they're on Amazon, they can buy your book. A librarian can buy your book. A bookstore can buy your book and they will get a one copy or however many copies are printed and sent to the customer and this is incredible because it means I, I do um, paperback, large print and hardback uh, on the video. You can see some of my books um, here and I don't keep those in stock. I don't have stock of my books. These are for display purposes, <laughs> uh, but I don't keep stock. So what happens? People order them like a bookstore in Michigan just ordered a whole load of my books and I didn't see those books. They went straight from the printer, Ingram Spark, to the bookstore um, or libraries or wherever. So this is probably the biggest tip. If you want your book in print, well, A, you should have your book in print. Don't just publish an ebook. There's, you know, you, there's no reason um, not to publish in print now, but it, do it as print on demand. Don't print 2,000 books and have them sitting in your garage because it's going to be really hard to sell them. <laughs> so do print on demand. That would be a big tip. Probably the other tip, is that I have tried to do everything. Like marketing wise, I have literally tried everything. And I've 
probably would have done better. Like I've really now narrowed down podcasting, for example, and I've got uh, a lot better at saying no, you know, around things that I don't want to spend my time on, but I, I can do podcasting. So I'm like, yes, I know this is a good investment of my time. I know I can come on here and give some value to your audience. So this is good for me. What is not good for me are things like, um, I'm not very good on YouTube. I don't do li Facebook live. I don't, I don't do Facebook at all, really. Um, you know, I'm not, I've just turned all that off. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't do consulting anymore. Um, you know, I, I do very few live events because I'm an introvert and I get very, very tired and burned out by people. <laughs> like we're going to be at London Book Fair at the same time. And I have scheduled three days either side of mm -hmm. London Book Fair because I know how tired I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've learned over time what to say no to, but it's been tough. I mean, I have literally tried everything so what i would say to people the lesson learned is you don't need to try everything like don't do tiktok and linkedin and like everything just pick like what do you like now so i listen to a lot of podcasts mm -hmm. um i listen to a lot of audiobooks so it makes sense for me to do podcasts and i narrate my own audiobooks that's what i was doing earlier today so that's something i definitely definitely do um i don't like facebook so i don't really do it i do some ads but that's you know that's about it so you have to so pick the things that you do and just focus on that and ignore everything else because otherwise you just become overwhelmed with everything that you should be doing. And you're like, ah, oh, just not going to do anything because I don't know what to do. So pick one thing, do that and then see what else you might like to try for sure. Experiment, but you know, think about your behavior now and how you like to do things and maybe try and go that route. Right. Right. I read recently, uh, it was Warren Buffett and I can give you the exact quote, but it was, you know, for every really great idea, I've said not, I said no to 99 others because I have mm. to know, yes, that's a good idea. And it's not that those ideas aren't brilliant and that they wouldn't work, but you have to evaluate how much time do you have, how much energy do you have? And, and I'm the same. I, I, I know that, wow, I get really excited. I'm going to give you everything and then I'm going to collapse. And so, you know, how much yeah. do you do that? You know, are you really prolific in your writing? Are you prolific in your advertising, your marketing, whatever it may be? But I think that that's truly, that goes across all levels, writing, life. Oh yeah, writing, absolutely. Anything. And I mean, I don't, I mean, my day job is running the creative pen business. And so I split my time in two and in the mornings I need to create. Uh, so I create and I do yoga or go to the gym or, you know, so I create and do exercise because these things are my life, the sustaining part of my life. And I, oh, there's another lesson learned. I've ended up with various chronic pain because I didn't look after my body enough, yeah. um, you know, and that's really key people. There are too many authors in chronic pain because we don't look after our bodies and we're like hunched over and we're like screens and um so there's another one so now i'm like right i create and i do exercise weights or yoga or whatever walking and then in the afternoon i do stuff like this podcast interviews i do marketing i do accounting i do like all the stuff to run a business mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have and if you're having a day so when i had a day job like most people listening i would get up at 5 a.m and i would write before work so i do the creative thing then i go to work and then in the evening i'd come home and i would do some marketing so I do one creative thing in the morning and one marketing thing at night. And, you know, I did that for five years and that adds up. Yeah, it does. It does. And I'm just <laughs> going to ask you a, an extra question here I had, because as you're talking and, and it sounds like we're pretty much on the same uh, path there in what we're doing. I've, I've noticed that, you know, having a schedule and your morning routines and your habits and your, your goals and your things like that are all very important. Is there a specific journal or routine that you use day to day that maybe you would recommend to others just out of, out of uh, well, I have a, um, well, I use things app, which is on my phone and my Mac, which I is like my to-do list. Okay. So that's what I, well, I guess on a bigger level, I have a project. So my project right now, as we speak is, um, the audio book of my next book, 
audio for authors. It's quite meta. So I'm recording that. So I'm creating the audiobook product. So I'm in the publishing phase of that book. Um, and then, so I know that's the project. So when I get up in the morning, that's the project, the creative project. And you can create with voice, doesn't have to just be writing. So that's my creating. Um, so I know that's overarching. Then I have my to-do list, which is on things mm -hmm. app, um, which I just love. And I'm always put, and I put fiction ideas in my phone, in that app. I have my to-do stuff. Um, and then at the end of the day, and because we're on, we're going to maybe use the video, um, I show you, um, this Hi. is called the Trig Life Mapper, um, which, it, yeah, I haven't, I haven't shown anyone this, this is the first oh. time I've been asked this. Um, so that actually is more like a log. So what I do at the end of the day is I write in there what I've done over the yeah. day. So, cause the to-do list is never finished. You no. can't ever finish a to-do no, list, but what, yeah, what I can do is say, this is what I did today. And I, if I, you know, went walking, I'll write down my kilometers or any, you know, anything that's pertinent in the world I write down. And, but it's not a journal, it's more of a log. And then I also have journals. So I have, um, like my latest one here is my blue loop term. I use the loop term brand. <laughs> so, and I have a lot of these. I don't know if you can see down there, mm. that's some of my journals. Oh. So I've got, I've got like 45 plus journals that I've been writing for many years. So mm. I've always been a writer, but yeah, so I have all these, I mean, when you're a writer, you write all this stuff down like a mental person all the time, you know, I'm just always writing stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> so there you well, go. I, I knew you'd have a journal and I knew you had a method. So it's very similar. I have a, you know, I have my notebook full of my ideas and what I'm going to do. But I also found that by having a, a recount of what I did through the day, because I think also being everything so digital, you don't actually see, you don't, you know, you didn't mm. write pages. You can't touch the pages you wrote that day. You don't see the interviews you did that day. You don't see the emails you mm. sent that day. You think, where did my time go? Oh, and you have this tendency to let that inner voice say, oh, did you you didn't get your to-do do do? exactly yeah. but well, I, read I, do. Like, oh, I did a lot look at this <laughs> oh and I do that but I also have on my wall here have you made art today oh, so wow. and that's really important to me because I could I could be very busy just doing admin I could just answer emails all day and that would be very useful to all these individual people but I'd never get anything written mm -hmm. so you have to this is the thing the authorpreneur thing the balance life balance you know and if you're i tell you the most common thing maybe people listening will be i don't have time to write my book so this is the most common thing for writers i don't have time to write my book well it's just the same as everything else if you don't make the time it's never going to happen and we all make time for things we care about so if you're not making time for your book then maybe you don't actually care enough about writing a book and that is a tough it's a tough call but you've got to make it because you have to give something else up no one's got enough time <laughs> so enough. you have to make it somehow <laughs> no, I agree totally and that is it's an evaluation okay well where am I putting my time what am I doing and uh, mm. it's sometimes give up Netflix hey. yeah <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> okay give up one hour of Netflix a night <laughs> exactly exactly but it really is about you know if I give this up and sometimes it's okay to give up the big things that you say was on your list. You maybe in running a marathon, you know, somebody said to me, oh, you like to do this. I don't want to run a marathon. It's, it's you know, it would just be too much. And it's a lot so, of training. Yeah, it's a good example. Again, it's a good example because if you choose to run, like running a marathon is a great goal, but you have to spend so much time training that it's going to take time off your book. So yes, you can run a marathon and write a book, just not at the same time. No. No, and exactly. It, it, and do everything else. <laughs> and there is a there is a neurological overload of mm. the, the the things we have to do, the things we want to do, and then you know those horrible guilt feelings about what we should be doing and should I do. don't should on yourself because there's so much of that going on. So sometimes it's just better saying, you know what, that's no longer on the list. It's not on my radar. Mm -hmm. and doors open and close. I tell my daughter that, you know, they, you, you can shut the door. You can always open it later. It's a door. It works, mm -hmm. but you, it's okay to shut the door sometimes because there's too much noise behind it. So, so um, what are your top recommendations to get people started when they're considering this full-time writing career? I mean, we talked about bringing up money and time and responsibility. Is there anything else that maybe we're overlooking there? 
Uh, well, it's mainly about multiple streams of income or how you are going to make a living. So um, if you want to only make money from books, you need to actually do some sums. You're like, okay, so let's just pick 50,000 US dollars. If I make 50,000 US dollars before tax from a job, how am I going to make 50,000 US dollars per year from books? That's actually quite hard. <laughs> so what I would say is, you know, um, you, for example, you need uh, multiple books. So one of the biggest thing as a writer is you don't just have one book, you have multiple books in a niche. If you get a publishing deal, they're going to want to know the plans for a series. Um, they're going to want to know what, what other ideas you have. So with, again, whether you traditionally publish or self-publish, that's the way to go. Uh, then there are lots of other ways you can make an income for non-fiction books. Uh, professional speaking is something um, that a lot of people do. Consulting, um, affiliate income, Income from a website for example podcast sponsorship if you want to go that route um, you know there's there's lots of different things you can do to put for put together what is now almost the portfolio life is kind of described uh, I definitely live a portfolio life you know so this week I'm narrating my audiobook and then I'll be writing my novel in February and then I'll be speaking in Nashville in April and you know I, I live this portfolio life and together that makes a good income but individually I could not you know well I make quite good money now from my books but you know I've got 30 33 books or whatever mm -hmm. so um, and it takes a while to write 33 books mm -hmm. so if you're just starting out you need to decide what your numbers are you need to potentially downsize you need to figure out where the money's coming from and really just learn split it into two think I need to learn the craft and I need to learn the business. So for example, some people, if you haven't been a freelancer or you haven't done that, you know, if you're used to a paycheck arriving on the same day every month, things will be quite shocking because, you know, you might, well, you might invoice and then it might be two months later when you get paid. So you need to understand some of the principles of running a business around you know cash flow and accounting to marketing to you know all of this type of thing around community so you know going to networking events and meeting people who don't think you're completely bonkers which <laughs> I remember being a very hard time when I first did this I had no friends no no friends it's actually why I started a podcast because I had no no author friends I was like how do I meet these people I know I'll start a podcast <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. But, but it's a lot of work. So you have to, um, you know, commit to that. But basically, it's learning um, the business uh, as well as the craft. And um, if people are interested, I have a book called How to Make a Living with Your Writing, um, which is a quite a slim book, uh, which is a start. And then I have business for authors, which goes into things like tax and accounting, which mm -hmm. doesn't sell very well, surprisingly, because people don't actually want to run a business. <laughs> But that's available if people are um, are interested. Yeah, and I would check this out because they they you know again and again when you talk about the the um, the books and the courses and uh, the networking and all those things, you just need to find that one small nugget of gold that really works for you. And when you put that to to into practice, it can really save you a lot of time and money and energy. And then you can come back. You don't have to do it all at once. It is a it is a journey and a transition. So um, as we talk about all this, it is huge what you're telling us. So is maybe we could give um, the first three steps that you would recommend to get started if we were transitioning. Uh, well, I, I literally think it, there is, it really is one, one big step, which is what do I want? And to be fair, that one step takes people a lot of time <laughs> because what do you want? I mean, I used to think that I wanted to be Tony Robbins. I thought that I wanted to be a speaker, like, because I love Tony Robbins material, his books, you know, his tapes and things. Mm -hmm. But I'm not Tony Robbins. I mean, I've seen I am not your guru. I mean, the man is uh, on another pl planet, you know, another plane of uh, peak performance. I'm not Tony Robbins, you know. Um, but I thought I wanted to be a speaker with the big stage. And, the, and then I was like, actually, that's not me. What am, I didn't realize that I was an introvert until I started 
speaking. And then I discovered that that was not my reach. And then at another point, I thought, oh, I just want to be like Stephen King. You know, I want to be a horror writer. And then I realized that Stephen King just spends all his time in his house uh, writing books and you know he's a wonderful guy and he actually says in his brilliant book on writing mm -hmm. don't don't meet your heroes don't expect them to be something else away from the page you know he's like my brain is on the page and I, I worship Stephen King <laughs> but then I was like oh my goodness so I don't want to be Tony Robbins I don't want to be Stephen King what do I want and it takes time to figure that out so what I would suggest to people is decide what you want or do you want traditional publishing deal? Do you want to win a literary prize? I decided in the end, I wanted to make six figures as a writer and I wanted to leave my job. That's what I wanted to do. And so that's what I aim for. And what the other thing is find a model. So find a model, somebody who is doing what you want to do and then look at how they got there. So if you want to make a living like me, come on over and see how I do it. But if you want to win a literary prize or be Stephen King, then you need to look at how, how they have done it um, and follow that path. So the three steps are so different depending on what you want. So that's my challenge to everyone listening. And, you know, we'll probably leave it here. You need to decide what you want and spend some time journaling with your journal and figure out what it is. Where do you want to be? So we're recording this in January, 2020. Where do you want to be in January, 2030? And how can you get to that point? Exactly, exactly. What do you want? I don't, we could just, that's it, you know? And that's yep. the biggest question that in the world. It. You can ask anybody and they go, I don't know. And yep. I, I've sat in groups where you just ask the person again and again, and you start to think, wow. And it was, there's no answer, but what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? You know, and you, it's all those silly psychological things, but really it's like, wow, it's so deep. So it is it is so if you um if you want some ideas so i have the creative pen podcast uh where i've got i've been doing it over a decade and a lot of interviews with lots of people making money in different ways a lot of writers so come on over to the creative pen podcast or if you prefer to read the creative pen.com pen with a double n lots of uh, information there and books and and everything like that so i hope people will have found something useful today I think they have. I, I have definitely. I appreciate it. It's so great to meet like minds and share all this information. I do encourage you to come over and check out um, the podcast, the creativepen.com podcast. It's fantastic. If you're already listening here, then you definitely need to be over there and uh, check out all the courses and books and downloads and emails. And we will definitely place some nice links below all of this so that we can get any, all of that uh, going back and forth because Really, it's, it's these encouraging bits of information that make you think. So any last encouraging words that you want to put out there, or maybe just the question? <laughs> well, it is the best time, I think, to be a writer. We, we can connect with people all over the world. And so I would really encourage you. Like, there's nothing stopping you except you. So, uh, yeah, go, go do it. Oh, thank you. Again, we encourage you to keep writing. This is Publishing Power, and today our guest has been Joanna Penn of thecreativepen.com. Check out her thrillers, check out her podcasts, all of her books, and more. And we look forward to seeing you. I look forward to seeing you at the London Book Fair and hanging out. And we'll be there next to the Alliance of the Independent Authors and so many other great uh, organizations that you need to be joining and getting together so that you can learn more. Thank you so much today. Thank you. Thank you.